First question from Stanley Sloan. I'm going to throw it your direction, John Mearsheimer, uh, which is, I'll be looking forward to hearing from the NATO skeptics what alternative international arrangements they would recommend in place of NATO. One sentence or two, John. NATO without the United States. Okay, excellent discipline. Next question from Donny or M. And it is also to you, John Mearsheimer. You've previously said that Russia is a declining great power. And my question is, will the further stagnation of Russia's economy, continuing exponential rise of China, increase the chances of Russia being admitted into NATO? Is that even a possibility? No, I think it's impossible because relations between the West and Russia have been so thoroughly poisoned that it's impossible to think of Russia becoming part of NATO. And next question to John Herbst uh, from Hank Cohen, a retired Foreign Service officer. If NATO loses U.S. troops, is it fair to say that Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia are likely to become Finlandized? Uh, the short answer is yes. Our troops are essential for security in Europe and for stopping Kremlin revisions. Oh, I so love how crisp, succinct, and pungent all of you are in your answers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, next up, from Pascal Siegel, NATO outspends Russia by 15 to 1. What additional deterrence does additional spending buy? I'm going to give this one to you, Sandy Vershbaugh. Isn't it time to talk about smart spending as opposed to more spending? Well, first of all, Russian defense spending figures are not entirely reliable. Uh, so I think the gap is not quite as great. Uh, but yeah, we do have to set clear priorities. But I think we've seen through the Russians, uh, Russians' ability to rapidly mobilize huge forces with little warning that uh, what we've done since 2016 is uh, basically the minimum that we need to do. And we, we, we can think of a rosier future when we get there. Uh, moving on, the next question from Valeria Yagsman. The question to the no team. If Russia attacks Eastern Europe, for example, the Baltic states, will Europe not be able to protect these countries? Do you see the U.S. intervening then? To you, Professor Mahler. Thank you. Um, two question, two sentences will be hard. I think the real problem is political. Uh, when you talk to NATO officers in the Baltics and Poland, they're worried about the decision lag uh, in Brussels. So that's a political question. And uh, I think Europe is capable of uh, uh, defending from Russia. I'm going to stay with you, Professor Muller, for the next question from Jack Emerson. Is something similar to CETO or Asia-Pacific NATO feasible for containing China? Europeans were willing to put aside differences in history to contain the USSR. Could Asian Pacific states surrounding China do the same? So here I will remain to my two sentence limit and simply say those are exactly the types of questions that NATO needs to be discussing. Uh, what kind of alliance does it want to be? Next question to you, Ambassador Herbs, uh, from Paula Margolis. Does NATO act as a deterrent to conflicts? Without a unifying structure, would countries feel less contained and break out more often? There's no doubt that NATO has been the key force for stability in Europe before, excuse me, during and after the Cold War. Thank you. Next question from Philip Walker. Leave aside what we get from our current engagement in NATO. What does current U.S. engagement in NATO actually cost? And if we disengage, what costs might we occur, incur that are currently covered by our level of engagement? Ambassador Vershbaugh? Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, but I think that uh, roughly about a third of our defense budget probably uh, goes to defense of Europe and of NATO. Uh, but I think if we disengage and have to come back in from from afar, either from the continental U.S. to to uh, deal with a crisis, we'll end up paying more than having a network of bases and uh, burden sharing with allies that we have today. So I would be hesitant to uh, recommend any uh, pull out from, uh, from Europe. 
Thank you so much, both for the substance and the succinctness. Next up from John Gay. How much do the Baltic states even offer for U.S. security uh, such that our troops should defend them with their lives? They're small states with small economies and small populations sitting on highly vulnerable terrain. Aren't they a major liability? I'm going to actually let both Johns, Mearsheimer and Herbst, have a swing at this because I think it's central to the question of NATO's relevance. First up, John Herbst. Uh, how important was Belgium to, to Britain in World War, before World War II and during World War II? Uh, we, the Russian ambition is to dominate further into Europe if they can. Stopping them in the Baltic, stopping them in Donbass and Ukraine is smarter than stopping them in the Baltic. Stopping the Baltics is smarter than having to deal with them in Poland or in Germany. John Mearsheimer. I think the security of Ukraine, the security of the Baltic states matters hardly at all for the United States. Uh, those countries were dominated by the Soviet Union during the Cold War, and it didn't matter for us then, and it doesn't matter for us now, and it won't matter in the future. And I think if the United States had not expanded NATO and provoked the Russians, we wouldn't have the problem that we're facing in Ukraine today, and there wouldn't be a threat of the Russians interfering in the Baltic states. Next up, from, from Ambassador Dan Freed for Professor Muller. Does Professor Muller believe the complications of international politics mean that the U.S. should let Putin control Ukraine? No, uh, but you can manage the Russian relationship in other ways. It's not clear to me how arming Ukraine is going to improve matters. Again, I don't think anyone would argue that Putin is an angel, but we need to avoid taking steps that will increase tensions with Russia. Next up from Paul Hughes, I'm surprised there's been no mention of nuclear strategy and its impact on the relevance of the U.S. to NATO. Yes, both the U.K. and France have weapons, but in far smaller numbers. John Mearsheimer, I feel like this is your wheelhouse, my friend. I think that if uh, the United States were to pull out of Europe, there's a very good chance that the Germans would eventually go nuclear. Uh, simply because they would view themselves as vulnerable without the American nuclear umbrella over their heads. Next up, from Andreas Benke, also to you, Professor Mearsheimer, NATO is all, has always been a mechanism to prevent the renationalization of security in Europe. Should the USA be willing to re-enter the European continent in the future to once again put out any inner European conflict? My argument is that the only time the United States should become militarily involved in Europe is when there's a potential hegemon, a state that threatens to dominate all of Europe that cannot be contained by the local powers. There is no such state present now. There is no such state on the horizon. And therefore, it's time to either go home or go to East Asia and help contain China. This next one I want to give to you, Ambassador Hirschbau. It's from Matthew Saville from Britain. Dr. Mueller has pointed out that NATO is a political alliance, but one which is predominantly focused on military capabilities. Does NATO have the ability to coordinate civilian organizations to deal with security concerns like migration, disinformation, and climate change? Should it even be attempting to do so? I think it has the capacity to do that, but it's not, but it, it's not necessarily uh, what NATO should be focusing on. I think NATO should see itself more as a facilitator, as a supporting player, but leave the coordination to the United Nations or the EU or organizations with more of a civilian focus. But those supporting functions can be very important, as we've seen in dealing with the migration issue in the Aegean and the Med in the last few years. Okay, my friends, I was super proud of myself and proud of you for the crisp professionalism with which we have been clipping through all of those questions.